What's up guys, I'm Jasinski. welcome back to the channel, and welcome back to session zero of our Iron Sworn Badlands uh, campaign, part two of our session zero, or episode zero, whatever you'd like to call it, whatever I name it. Um, in the last episode, we built our Badlands, we found out the truths of our world, how everything was set up, and we're just going to go over those real quick just to refresh our mind, because today we're going to be building our character that we'll be exploring this world with, and I want to make sure that the way we build him is in line with our truth, so the weird, of course, strange occurrences populate the land if you know where to look and where folks Folks look elsewhere, only the foolhardy would venture into the night alone and unarmed. So the Badlands are a dangerous place at times, but not always. Uh, Exodus, how we came to the Badlands. Mayors, councilmen, senators, etc. all had a hand in dictating how we should live back east. And we came west to organize our own politics to fit our way of life. So we are a very independent people. And we left all that was in the back east behind. Whatever it is, we may discover that while we're playing. But right now, we, we don't know. We just know that we left it to live the way we want to live. Native peoples. Now, wary peace exists between the Badlanders and those who first lived on the land we occupy. Relationships are not uncommon, but can still... Oh, but... Ugh. People can still be set in their ways as a mentor, right? Blech. And we do know that there are at least three fantasy races in the Badlands that are, you know, intelligent. They're elves, dwarves, and orcs. Uh, back East. Uh, back East thinks we are their colony, and they want to rule over us as they did before. Their meddling is constant and oppressive, so we may run into some folks who are from Back East and trying to oppress the peoples of the Badlands. Uh, like we said, we tried to escape them, and now they're just coming after us. Uh, communities. Settlements in the Badlands range in size from a steading with a few families to a village of several hundred. Travel and trade between towns is not uncommon. We established two uh, major settlements in the Badlands. There is Hernandez's Gateway, which I imagine, if I'm going to move this over to the... Oh, I can't really... <laughs> I can make it small, though. I can make it smaller. I imagine is somewhere here along the border between the Sea of Grass, which is like the Great Plains, sort of, and back east. Um, so I imagine... It's somewhere around there, maybe in and around this area here, because I think this border follows a river. That's why I'm, I'm, I think this border follows like a major river. So I think it's going to be like right along this area, probably where it's jutting into the back east. Let's pull this back open. And then we have New Iron Falls, which is on the western coast somewhere here, uh, which is a very important trading hub. The Iron Horse, the trains, railroads. Uh, surveillance from railroads have started to appear in the Badlands. A few small rail lines have been already been built. There is at least one rail line running from Hernandez's Gateway to uh, New Iron Falls. Um, Hernandez's gateway and new iron falls have already been connected by such a rail line. Like I said, beasts like monsters and stuff. Uh, this is where uh, this is where some of the ideas I'm getting for this character are already coming from. Uh, beasts of all sorts roam the badlands. They dwell primarily in the reaches, but range into the settled lands to hunt. There, they often prey on cattle, but attacks on travelers, coaches, or even settlements are not uncommon. It is rumored that the elves know how to tame some of these beasts and that orcs hunt them for sport. Guns, 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 guns. Uh, rare is the Badlander who isn't carrying iron. And if you draw down on someone, you best expect them to draw back. So I expect that most of everybody owns a firearm of some sort, but I don't think that means everyone knows how to use their firearm properly. Uh, I think there's people who are like crack shots and I think there's people who could not hit the broad side of a barn to be frank. <laughs> so we'll come across people who are dangerous and some are more of a danger to themselves than other people. The law. Uh, crime ain't exactly rare here in the Badlands. Folks are just about as likely to do what they wish as what they ought to. 
So yeah, there's gonna be criminals we come across, but there's also gonna be fine people. It's not a lawless wasteland. Uh, and then the lands themselves, the Badlands, are a cruel but beguiling mistress. Gorgeous vistas and stunning sunsets belie the perils of the wide and dangerous land. <laughs> so there's our truce once again. I'm already getting an idea for what our character is. I think he, it's gonna be a he. And I think our character is, I think he's a monster hunter of sorts. I think he is hired out by the peoples of the Badlands when a monster or a massive beast is nearby terrorizing them and they need it dealt with. And he is paid to go deal with these monsters. I think that is his trade. He is a monster hunter. So I'm gonna come up here. I'm using roll 20 to track everything in our campaign here. So, uh, if you're if you're curious, everything's up there. Um, we're gonna go to his character sheet. This is the character sheet for uh, Iron Sworn. Uh, I'm also gonna be using the Iron Sworn rulebook here to just guide us through the character creation process. So I think the first things first is that we need a name. Well, for our character, we need a name for him. Uh, and I am using the Badland rules uh, naming conventions here. So it's going to be much more North America uh, names. So we're going to go ahead and we're just going to roll on this chart here. And I'm just going to do roll D 1D100. 1, 1D100. And see what we get for his first name. First name, 10. Archie. Okay. Archie. And what is his last name? We can come down here to the surnames as well. And roll 1D100 again. 34. 34. Archie Hall. And you know what? Uh, do, I wonder, what do you have a nickname at this point? Um, he's a monster hunter of sorts. But that begs the question, is Archie someone that... Uh, would prefer to go by a nickname or that some people would give him a nickname. I, you know what? Now I'm thinking about this. I think this character, Archie, when he, uh, when he tells people his name, I think, cause Archie is a sort of like really casual, like young kid name. And I think our character is a very serious person. And he probably feels that, you know, people aren't going to take me seriously if they hear that, oh, Archie the Monster Hunter is coming to town to handle things. They might think, oh, he's just some kid, or oh, this name does not uh, give me the best of confidence in this guy. So I think he does have a nickname he goes by, and we're just gonna roll on the nickname chart over here to see what we come across. We might roll a couple different times, because I think he'd wanna go with something that, you know, gives him a sort of air of competence about him. So we're going to roll 147. What's 47 give us? Hold out. Uh, maybe not so much. He's not really a guy who's, you know, just trying to sneak guns into places. 55. Lame. No, <laughs> he would not want to be called lame. Oh, gosh, that would he would not want that at all. Uh, hmm. Maybe he would just go by a pseudonym. Maybe he would just use a different name instead of his own name. Uh, I think that would make more sense. Maybe let's go back up to the male names and roll on the A's. I think he would go something on the A's there, maybe. Or maybe, maybe Archie is his nickname from when he was younger. Maybe his real name is Archibald. Oh, yeah, I dig that. Archibald Archie Hall. Archibald Hall. Yeah, okay. I see it now. Yeah. So Archibald Hall, or Archie, as his friends call him, or family calls him. Um, he is a monster hunter. He's a monster hunter, and that is his trade. Now we have to build out his stats. And I'm going to go switch over to the Iron Sworn rulebook here. And Iron Sworn uses a sort of standard array, which it gives you five numbers to choose from. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and use that. So we get a three, a two, a two, and a one. And well, two ones, rather. So I think Archibald, to be a monster hunter, he needs to be like a great shot. Because I don't think Archibald 
is the kind of guy to go into melee combat. I think he is a ranged fighter primarily. So I'm gonna go ahead, get in here and edit this and pull this over a little bit. And I'm gonna give him three in edge. That's where we're gonna put his three. Now, I think when you have to like, if you're like hunting monsters and stuff, you have to use your wits. You have to be very witty or very stealthy. And I think that he would probably be more on the side of trying to use stealth to gain an advantage on his enemies rather than his wits. And well, maybe we could put two in wits and shadow because, you know, he has to have the knowledge and expertise like it says over here for wits, knowledge, expertise, observation, and then not only does he have to learn about the creatures he's hunting, the monsters he's hunting, he also has to be, you know, sneaky enough to, you know, sneak up on them and then get the drop on them and then kill them. So we're going to put the two ones we have in heart and iron. He's not fantastic in melee combat. He can hold his own, uh, but he he prefers to stay in range and he's he's courageous. He has to go out and fight these monsters. But I don't think socializing is his best trait. I think he's much more a man of action than a man of words. I, so he'd rather <laughs> he'd rather talk with his guns than talk with his uh, words. You know, if you know what I'm saying. I think that's good on his stats right there. Uh, then it talks about our heart, our health, our spirit, and supply. Just to quickly go over those, our health. That's literally our physical health, where we are if we're hurt or something. It inflicts that spirit is sort of like our morale and how uh, willing we are to keep going forward in spite of everything that might be happening to us. And supply basically just covers our entire inventory, ammunition, all that stuff. And all these things can change over time. Momentum, that is kind of a representation of how our quest is going and how we're doing and it can be gained and lost. And I'll explain if it happens, uh, the effects it can have on the rolls we make. Oh, I didn't mean to pull that off. <laughs> vows. All right. So um, I'm going to go over our vows here in a second. But first, I want to build our bonds, who we our relationships with other people and communities and stuff. So we're going to go over to the bond sheet here. We start with three bonds, uh, up to three bonds, really. I had already thought about one of them. Um, and I think I think Archibald has a family member that he's really close with. And, you know, I'm going to say it's his brother. I'm going to say he has a brother um, named. Let's roll on the chart again. Let's figure out what his name is. Archibald's brother. His name is 92 Samuel Samuel Hall Scripters brother family. Who so we know that he is a <laughs> we know that he has a brother and that they are very close together and I think that's probably gonna come in uh during one of his vows probably. This is just to set up, you know, things that can happen and whatnot. And then I think considering Archibald is a monster hunter, maybe Archibald had a teacher maybe he had someone who taught him about monster hunting and he learned everything about monster hunting monster hunting <laughs> uh hunting monsters and how to hunt them and you know best practices and whatnot from them and he has a bond with that person i think they're still alive uh so i'm gonna give them a name too let's roll up a name for them i don't know if they're a man or a woman so i'm gonna roll a uh just a D100. If it's above 50, it is a man. If it's below 50, it's a woman. 17, it's a woman. So he's taught by a woman. What is her name? I uh, will roll D100 twice. Two D100s, a 77. Margarita, ooh. Margarita, 10. Margarita Brooks was his old uh, mentor. Uh, monster hunting mentor. She taught him all the tricks of the trade about hunting monsters in the Badlands. And so he has a bond with her as well. Now, I'm not too certain about a third bond right now. So I think I'm just going to keep that third bond in reserve. I'm just going to put this reserve bond. 
and I'm going to implement it whenever I think something comes up that would that would make sense. You know, you don't have to come up with everything immediately. You can always leave it up to the game to help inspire you later on. So we have our bonds now. We'll go back to the rules on how to make our characters. We don't have any abilities, so that's good. Now that we have our uh, bonds, I think we need to take a look at our vows. So it says we should start with two vows, uh, a long-term goal and then an immediate situation. So basically just to kick us off. So let's go ahead and wind this back out here. And then we're gonna go to the summary here so we can see our vows. Now, I think, you know, he's been out here in the Badlands for a while and maybe, maybe this vow involves his brother some way. I think that Samuel, Samuel Hall, is not like Archibald at all. I think Archibald and Samuel used to live back east and, you know, they were close and everything, but then one day Margarita uh, came to town and Archibald was fascinated by her. Maybe it was a, maybe it was like, you know, uh, he was attracted to her at first, but then he learned about her profession instead and became much more of a platonic relationship. Um, and he decided to become a monster hunter like her, but Samuel decided to stay back East for whatever his reasons might be. And so, you know, they parted ways and Archibald went West to the Badlands to apply his trade as a monster hunter. Somewhat recently, they met up again. And I think Samuel said that he, he was coming west. He was moving west with his family. He had a, like a whole family now. Uh, it maybe had been a couple years or so since they had seen each other. And Samuel was going west. He was going to, um, maybe, maybe he wasn't going to uh, New Iron Falls. He wasn't going to the big city on the coast because that's what he was trying to get away from he was trying to go find a place to you know do his own thing so let's go ahead and shrink this up and see what we got here there are a few places where he could have gone i think he probably wanted to get as far away from back east as possible so i think that he went to tall pines which is sort of like um oregon uh and washington uh state where it's just like rolling hills, mountain, like some mountains and a tons and tons of just pine forest as far as the eye can see in a really rainy place. And he wanted to go there and start his own homestead. And Archibald was totally on board with this. He was still working as a monster hunter, probably in the high plains or the sea of grass. Samuel said that once he arrived there, uh, he would, you know, send some mail back to Archibald because Archibald probably lives in a certain town uh, in this area, so, you know, because I don't think that Archibald is, has like a homestead or anything because I don't think that he is settling down to be a rancher or farmer or something. So I think that Sam has said, hey, brother, I'm heading off to Tall Pines and I'm going there with my family. And when I get there, I'll make sure to send you a letter by post to let you know that we've arrived and maybe come visit me. And I think Archibald was like, that sounds fine with me, brother. And I'll, I'll come and see you as soon as I can. Make sure you send me that letter. And I think Samuel gave him a, a time in which he think he'd arrive. And I don't think Archibald ever got that letter. I think Archibald was totally expecting to get this letter from his brother. Cause I think, I think Archibald and Samuel, I think they're two peas in a pod. And I think Archibald finds Samuel totally dependable. Maybe he waited a little bit. He's like, oh, he's probably busy working on his homestead or something, but then he still never got that letter. And now he's worried about him. Now he's wondering, does something happen to my brother? And I think his vow is find my brother. I think he needs to find his brother. And I think that it is an extreme vow because these are the you know difficult ratings. And depending on how high the difficulty rating is, it can take longer and the danger is greater. And I think this is an extreme vow because Archibald has to go pretty far west to get to where Samuel was supposed to be, where he was supposed to arrive. And he also has to, you know, maybe try to pick up his trail and follow his trail to Tall Pines to find his brother. And maybe along the way or maybe there. And there's all kinds of things that can happen on the way. There's monsters, there's the lithic mountains, which are kind of like the Rocky Mountains in our world. There's just massive 
line of mountains that cut the Badlands in half that are extremely dangerous. Um, there's only a few paths through. His brother probably didn't take the railroad because I don't think the railroad is allowing that sort of transfer. It's like, oh, come on board and bring everything that you let brought with you to, from the city to make this homestead. You can't, no, you can't bring down the train. You, you can only bring like, you know, carry on luggage. And I don't think Samuel wanted to do that. I think he wanted to bring everything he could and not leave anything behind or have to come back and get or anything because travel's dangerous. So I don't think he took the rail line to Hernandez's, um, or not Hernandez, wait, to noon Iron Falls and then headed north. I think he just went on his own path in like a wagon train, sort of like Oregon Trail, I guess. And now uh, Archibald can't follow this, can't, uh, he can't go on the rail line because that's not the path his brother took. He has to follow his brother's trail as best he can because it's been a while. <laughs> so I think that's his first vow. His first vow is he needs to find his brother. And I think the issue is, is that he he has to have the supplies to make this long and arduous journey. The way Archibald lives, I don't think he's been, you know, gathering up tons and tons of money and just hoarding it all. I think he spends it rather willingly, like on people to help them out or maybe just buying provisions, buying bullets. I think he has to use a lot of bullets to take down some of these monsters and especially some high quality ones because I think uh, Archibald's gonna have a rifle as well as a pistol. So he has to spend a lot of money on provisions for himself and then also on room and board because he doesn't know his own house. So I don't think he has a lot of money. So I think his second vow is he's, or, he's, got, a, he's got a bounty. He's got a monster bounty right now to help him pay for his way to find his brother. I think he's gonna be monster hunting on the trail to help pay for <laughs> the supplies to get there. And if he's got a horse, he also has to supply food for the horse and take care of it. So, um, I think he's been hired by a local settlement to find and kill this monster. So I think we need to come up with a name for this settlement. We're gonna just gonna come up with something real quick here. A descriptor and a feature. I think that would be pretty good. So we'll roll on the descriptors first. Roll 1d100, 11, dry, okay. And then roll feature, dry butt. <laughs> no, I don't like that one. I don't think someone wanted the name there, uh, town that. 25, dry canyon. Well, I guess Dry Canyon was makes sense. The Dry Canyon. Maybe it's on the edge of a canyon, probably. Maybe he's in the High Plains now and it's on the edge of a canyon. Dry Canyon. So sure, the you know, maybe maybe Badlanders don't really care about naming their towns something fancy. They're just like, well, it's Dry Canyon. Name of this name of this new settlement's Dry Canyon. And he is here in the town of Dry Canyon to find and kill a monster. So that is his second vow. Uh, kill the monster Dry Canyon. And I think this is probably a dangerous one. I don't think, I think he's a monster hunter, but I don't think monsters, regardless of which one, I think it'd only be troublesome if it was like, you know, a baby. And I think this is a dangerous vow. I think this monster is, is dangerous. Like it, it's not a joke. So we have his two vows. We have, he needs to find his brother, but he's right now he's got to kill the monster at Dry Canyon. Now let's, let's build um, Archibald a little bit more here. We're going to go to the assets here and he gets three assets. So we're going to go, uh, I think it should be somewhere down here. Yes, there they are. How many assets do we get? I would like to remember. It's three assets. We get three assets. So um, Badlands also adds a bunch of assets that I, uh, I'm not going to, I'd have to add them custom. So I'd have to type all this in, but I'm not going to type them here. I'll just, you know, add the name and then do that off, <laughs> off camera. I think that Archibald is a sharpshooter. I think he is at his best when he is at range with a long rifle taking down his prey. So we're going to put in three inputs here and the asset name, sharpshooter. 
That means immediately when he s does the secure and advantage move, plus his wits, by taking a moment to aim and vision where he tends to land his shot. Uh, then he adds a plus one to secure and advantage, and he takes a plus one momentum on a hit. So that's pretty good for him. So, yep, yeah, that's pretty good. And then we're going to go in and take a look at the paths here. All right, so I think I got one here, the Slayer, the Slayer path, because... He, you know, he's a monster hunter. He, obviously, he's a slayer of some kind. He slays monsters for coin. So, uh, that makes total sense that he has the slayer path. So, whenever he gathers and does the gather information move by tracking a beast or a horror, or when he secures an advantage by readying himself for a fight against them, he can add plus one and then take plus one momentum on a hit. So I think that makes total sense. He's a monster hunter, so we, we're going to give him the Slayer Path. And then we're going to give him one more asset here. Um, what we gave him there was a combat talent uh, for that. And I want to look at these uh, Badlands again here and see if there's anything that makes sense. I th There might be. Hmm. No, I don't, I don't like anything from that. So let's... Let's take a look at the companions. I think it makes total sense for someone in the Badlands to have a horse. It makes total sense. There's a lot of ground to cover when he's hunting these monsters. Maybe he has to chase them sometimes. And the best way to chase them is on horseback. So I think that he has a horse. Now, I think Archibald would just give him a uh i don't think archibald would give him a normal name i think uh this horse has a sort of like nickname so we're gonna go ahead and roll on the nicknames chart and see what we come up with for this horse's name so well d100 97 wadi okay wadi it is wadi the horse and then we get to pick one of these options here. We can pick Swift, uh, which gives us, you know, bonuses for speed and stuff. We have Fearless, uh, which would make sense because he would want a pretty uh, fearless horse when he's uh, fighting monsters. But um, I don't think his intention is to charge into combat on his horse. I think that to goes totally against what his um, intention is when hunting monsters. He's not trying to charge into them. He's trying to fight them at range. So I think the best one to pick would be Swift. And we're just going to track his uh, health here, the horse's health. So whenever he faces danger, plus edge, using his horse's speed and grace. So if he has to face danger, he can use edge. Or... Uh, oh, no, no, no. He, when he's facing danger using edge or when he undertakes a journey, he adds plus one to his face danger or undertake a journey when he's uh, using his horse for either of those. So, yeah, we got our three assets. We got sharpshooter for his rifle. Uh, he's a slayer. He's a monster hunter, obviously. And then he's got his horse, Wadi. So I think that's good for his assets now. Let me make sure I'm not missing anything here because I think I think Archibald's ready. Yeah, I, th I think he's ready. What I'm going to do here is I'm just going to write in some equipment here. So I think it makes total sense that uh, he has in his equipment, he has a long rifle. I think it makes total sense. He has a revolver. Everyone's got to have a sidearm because, you know, sometimes you got to shoot people instead of monsters. And I think he's also got, um, I think as a monster hunter, he has specific tools for certain monsters so i think to say that he has like silver bullets would make total sense uh because i think maybe there's some monsters in the badlands that you have to use silver to kill and he would know that after being a monster hunter for so long archibald doesn't have just like normal road leathers and stuff like he has a trench coat probably like a brown leather trench coat and like you know a nice wide brimmed cowboy hat he is like a leather vest underneath this uh trench coat i think it's reinforced i don't think it's just normal leather so i think he has a reinforced leather vest because 
I think maybe one time he was clawed by some beast and it just tore right through his leathers and gashed him so bad. And after that, he was like, I'm getting something better. I need something stronger to fight these monsters because they'll just tear right through what I got. So I think he's got a, like a reinforced leather vest that, you know, sort of protects him a little bit more and makes it more believable if like, you know, something claws at him and it doesn't break through his <laughs> armor easily. So yeah, I think we have Archibald. We're ready for our first session. I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this little uh, character creation here with me and I hope you're excited as I am to start playing with Archibald Hall here in the Badlands and find his brother and hunt down some monsters along the way. So I hope you will join me in the next episode when we begin Archibald Hall's journey in the Badlands. If you like this, please leave a like and comment down below, subscribe, and make sure you ring that bell notification button so you always know when the next episode comes out, and I will see you guys in the next one. Farewell.